you will learn mainly three things from this simple beginner level tutorial. You will learn how to record your voice in Adobe Audition, how to edit those recordings, and how to get an audio file from that recording. In the process of doing so, you will become familiar with Audition's user interface. There are mainly two types of interface in Audition, Single Waveform Editor and Multitrack Editor. I will show you how to use both of them. After opening Audition, you will see a screen like this. It is the default workspace. Audition has several different workspaces, and each suite a different kind of editing. You can see the complete workspace list from Window, Workspace. Workspace is basically a layout of components with a different arrangements. Once you get used to Audition's interface, you will find different workspaces suitable for different kinds of tasks. In this beginner-friendly tutorial, we will work in the default workspace. As I said earlier, Audition has two kinds of editors, Single Waveform Editor and Multitrack Editor. You can choose which kind of editor you want to use. You have to use Waveform Editor if you are working with a single recording or single audio file. I have to create a new audio file and record into it. I will do that in a moment, let's see what Multitrack option asks. For Multitrack, you have to create a new Multitrack session. A Multitrack session can be saved and reloaded later. But for the Waveform Editor, you cannot do that. With the Waveform Editor, you can get an audio file at the end of processing. So how do we record audio in Adobe Audition CC? The first thing you need to do is to check if the proper microphone is selected for recording. You can check it from Audition Settings, then Audio Hardware. Check if the default input shows the microphone name you want to use. You can see a list of microphones attached to your computer. I am using a Samson USB mic for this recording, and that is selected here. If you want to use any other microphone, you have to select that from this list. The default output is the device you will use to listen to the recording. If you are using live monitoring during recording, this device will be used for live monitoring. You can see I have selected external headphones, which is also the system default. External headphones is also appearing here. System default means the device selected in the sound settings of your OS. If I change the audio device from the system settings, it will also change here. It is changed to MacBook Pro speakers as I change the system default. I will change it back to external headphones. So make sure the correct device is selected for recording and click OK. The next thing to do is check the microphone's input level. Double click inside the meter area and the input monitoring will be active. Before recording, it is good to check that your mic input gain is set properly. You should aim to reach minus 12 in the meter during the loudest peaks. Not all your spoken words will reach minus 12, but the loudest one should do. You do not have to reach precisely minus 12. Something around minus 12 is fine. If the loudest peak reaches minus 12, you are getting a good recording that you can process easily later. Though minus 12 is not the ideal output volume level. The ideal or commonly accepted level is minus 3 in the meter, but you can fix that after recording. If you record close to minus 3, it can cross 0 from where sound distortion happens. Because 0 is the maximum level on this meter. If you take your audio beyond 0, Audition will not increase the volume, but audio data will get lost. Also, recording close to leaves very little headroom for post-processing. Some audio effects may boost the signal, so keeping some headroom, at least 6 is recommended. If you are not reaching minus 12 in the meter, you may have to position the mic differently or increase input gain from your audio interface. You may have to come close to the mic or talk louder. To record audio, I have to open a waveform audio file. Click on the waveform icon. You have to give the file a name. This file name will be visible inside Audition, and you can switch to different files when you have multiple files. I will get back to this point later. I will give this file name recording one. A sample rate of 44.1 kHz works okay for voice recording. A higher sample rate will take up more space on the hard drive, and you will not hear any noticeable difference. Moreover, your audio devices may not be able to handle or process a higher sample rate. If you do not know exactly why you need a higher sample rate, Choose 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. Though a higher sample rate is not useful in most cases, you should not choose a lower sample rate of 32 kHz or more down. Audio quality may not be that good with such a lower sample rate. So I will choose a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. 
For voiceover mono recording channel is fine. If you are recording music, you can choose stereo. You can convert a mono recording to a stereo recording later. Mono is also simpler to handle. To keep things simple for voice recording, choose mono. Bit depth should be 32-bit float. If you record in 32-bit float, you will get some benefits in post-processing. After all these things are set correctly, click OK. We are now ready to record the audio. Clicking on the red record button will start recording. To stop recording, press the spacebar or click the stop button. I will let you hear the original recording without any processing. Adobe Audition is a quite powerful software. If you are looking for a paid software or if you are looking for a good software which can do very good work with voiceover recording and editing, then Adobe Audition is a good choice. After recording the audio, I got a waveform. This waveform can be edited like a document editor. You can select, copy, paste, and delete the waveform as you do in any text editor. If you want to record another audio, you must create another audio file. The red vertical line is the playhead line, and if I click anywhere inside the waveform, the playhead will move there. If I press record, it will start recording audio from that point. That means if you press record again, it will overwrite the audio. This part was recorded when I second time pressed the record button. If I click the waveform icon again, nothing happens. I have to create a new file from the file menu to record a second audio. Create a new audio file. The process of creating a new file is the same as before. I will name this file recording 2. If I click record, a new waveform will be created. You may be wondering what happened to the other waveform. That waveform also exists, and I will show you in a moment how to switch between these waveforms. I used the spacebar to stop the recording. You can see the name Recording 2 at the top. In this panel, you can see all the recordings you have. The currently shown waveform is highlighted by blue color on this panel. If you want to see waveform of another recording, double-click on its name. Now we see the waveform of Recording 1. You can also switch between recordings from here. Remember there are multiple ways to do the same thing in Audition, and as you use the software, you will get used to it. If you want to get an audio file from this recording, you can export it. Go to File, Export, File. You have to give a file name. You can keep the file name you gave for recording, or you can change it. I will change the name. Then you have to choose a location to save. I will save it to the desktop. You can select a file format. There are many different formats available, but I prefer WAV. It works on every system, and WAV is a lossless, uncompressed format. I can choose to save the metadata, and it helps to load this audio faster in Adobe Audition. If I open this audio in Audition later, Audition can process it quickly. You can see the exported recording, and above that a PKF file with the metadata. If you want to share the audio with someone, you have to send just the WAV file. If you want to open an audio file in Audition, drag it to the panel. For example, I will drag the improved audio to the panel. We are still seeing the waveform of Recording 1, as that is highlighted. I can switch between the waveforms of different audio from the panel. I can also do it from here. There are other ways to get an external audio file into Audition. You can import the audio file or open the audio file. There are also icons in this panel to do the same job. The red line with a blue icon on top is called the playhead. You can scrub the playhead over the waveform, and you will listen to the audio in a strange manner. You can zoom in or out of the waveform by scrolling. You can fit the waveform in the viewing area from this button. You can activate looped playback from this icon. Blue means the icon is active. There are also some zoom in and out buttons here which I am not discussing. But you should explore those to get an idea. To play audio from a point, click on the waveform and click on play. You can also use the spacebar to play or pause the audio. Adobe Audition is a quite powerful software. If you are looking for a paid software or if you are looking for a good software,
You can see which actions you performed on a waveform from history. You can travel back and forth in history to get to a previous point. Every waveform has a different history. It is a good place to remind you what changes you have made so far on the waveform. I will be on recording one waveform and will do some basic audio editing tasks. You should practice the basic effects I am going to show. If you practice, you will become comfortable using this, and things will make more sense.